Hey guys, Stealth here, and welcome back to Ultimate Admiral Dreadnoughts. Today is a Sunday, at least that's when this video is going live, and that means that it is time for another Patreon scenario. If you want to vote on what the next scenario should be, then you can do so by becoming a Patreon supporter down below through the description link. This one was sent in, to add to the confusion, by War at Sea, not to be confused with War on the Sea, which is the other game that I cover. It is near the beginning of the Cold War and your superiors have received info that the Russians are planning to create a naval blockade of Japan shortly after the war. High Command has asked you and your colleagues to design and build a new class of destroyer. The Russians are most likely building ships of this type as well, so make sure yours is even better than theirs. Give the ship a name that will give off the concept of denying communist, expansi ex blah, communistic expansion. <laughs> Good luck, designer. Now, we are going to be building uh, two to three destroyers versus an enemy light cruiser and assisting one to two destroyers. Um, the creator says you must sink one vessel and or cause 50% structural or 25% flooding damage to another vessel before any of yours sink. One or one and a half kills to win depending on how many ships the enemy has. It may be the experimental light cruiser with very minimum displacement armament, so that's the alternative to what I'm allowed to do. You are to make it with decent speed, 35 plus knots, excellent survivability, i.e. many bulkheads, armors, pumps, etc. You have to build it with the concept of a gunboat. Unfortunately, you have to build it with only one to two gun turrets with calibers of your choice. You may have torpedoes, but choose wisely of how many. Um, this is a curious ask, because it has to be a gunboat, but I can only have one to two gun turrets. I, um, I'm i going to take a bit more liberty with that and say that if I want it to be a gunboat, and it's been a while since I get a, did a gunboat duel of destroyer versus destroyer, um, I'm going to add more turrets to it. And I know that's not exactly in keeping with how destroyers were developed post-World War II, um, they went with fewer and fewer turrets. And, well, this time around we're going to have to do it with a bit more. Because torpedo juicing is fun, but we just had a scenario that was fairly heavy on torpedo usage. So this time around, gunboats it is. And the gunboats should immediately be in range, as the starting distance is a mere 7,000 meters. We're going to go with the modern destroyer leader. At least that way we'll have a larger hull. Uh, the other ones is 2150, no. Uh, we're going to make this thing as large as it can be, which is 3000 tons. Range is not important. We're going to set it to many bulkheads, not maximum. Again, <laughs> broken record, but geared turbines 2 is just the best that you can get. It gives you the more horsepower per ton, and so long as price consideration is not a factor, you can just go with it, and it's, wow, it's generally the better option. Secondary tower over here, uh, funnel system over there, and you can even put some guns on there. Although I believe they're only, what, 2 inch? Yeah, you can have a couple of 2 inch guns on there. Which, however, does fit my theme of being a gunboat-ish destroyer. Anti-flooding systems, yes, I would like that. Auxiliary systems as well, because there is a fairly high likelihood that I will at some point have some flooding issues. I'm going to go for 40 knot speed. Let's say um, auto loading turrets with electro hydraulic turrets to rotate them. Because this way I can try and keep my guns on target even as I'm doing a lot of, uh, well, pretty heavy maneuvering most likely. Coincidence range finding. We're targeting stuff. Uh, stuff. We are targeting stuff at very short range, yeah? Uh, I don't know where that came from. We're going to go with a dual barrel Mark 5 inch, or um, yeah, it is a Mark 5 5 inch gun. And we can have four of those. This way we're approaching our displacement of 29.15 out of 3k. And I have to have a torpedo launcher. So let's make it a triple. And if I can shift this tower slightly farther back, then the torpedo launcher can sit over there. So congratulations, you've developed a Fletcher. <laughs> That's basically what this thing is. Uh, except it's a Fletcher with dual guns instead of single guns. Now, the displacement needs to be looked at, the offset. Unfortunately, the bridge cannot be moved farther forward. So in that case, I'm going to have to move some parts up. 
The question is, to where? How heavy is that funnel system? 200 tons. The torpedo launcher is a mere 50 tons. So this thing is as far forward as it should be. What I could and try to do is add... Yeah, like that. Two torpedo tubes per side. Shift the secondary tower forward. Just not that far. Shift this one a little bit further back. Point two. I'm willing to accept that. Now we're not going to go with Lidite. Lidite is a surefire way to get yourself blown up. And it's not something that I generally try to <laughs> try to do. Uh, doesn't really mean that it doesn't happen automatically. But sometimes it's... Um, it's an unfortunate side effect, shall we say. Now, here's a difficult part of a destroyer. Um, the designer of the creator, or the, sorry, the creator of the scenario said, make it survivable. Excellent survivability, i.e. many bulkheads, armor, pumps, etc. I already have a lot of pumps. Um, I already have quite a few bulkheads and reinforced bulkheads and watertight doors at that. The question is, how am I going to tack on more armor while still doing all the rest? That's a problem. Because there's not that much that I can shave off of this ship currently. Well, maybe a bit of speed. I could make it go 36 knots. And that way I can still add a bit of belt armor. Citadels have not been invented on these things, so I don't have to keep those in mind. And I can have a maximum belt armor of one and a half inches. Which, considering we're starting at 7,000 meter range, is fairly useless. As I will have three inches of armor total. One and a half percent, or one and a half inch plus 100% armor quality equals three inches of armor. And uh, this thing can start penning stuff at eight or rather, at 7,500 meters, I can do 5.5 .5 inches of pen. So even at 7,000 meters, they are perfectly capable of whacking these destroyers. Which means that tacking on this much armor is generally a bit of a waste of time. Maybe a bit more on the turret, but only to protect it from flash fires, insofar as you can. Deck armor is really not important. Destroyers usually use speed as a defense. Going fast is another way to ensure that you don't need a lot of armor. Um, unfortunately, I cannot get Propeller Shaft 3. It would cut quite a bit off my turning circle. 70 meters. It also boosts acceleration and turning rate. I haven't even looked at my engine efficiency. 100. Cool. Um... Even with induced boilers? Even with natural boilers? With natural I can get up to 97.8. I can get up to 100 here. That means I have 100 tons. Okay. I'll take that. Um, torpedo damage and torpedo flooding chance. It doesn't matter that much. And it immediately adds 75 tons. So maybe... Put these things back on. Uh, get a slightly better sonar array. Tack on a bit more armor. And up the speed. Nope, cannot do that. So we're going to be doing 37 knots. Um, conning tower can be up armored. And the rest of it, well... These are considered main guns because you don't have secondaries on a destroyer. Now, this thing doesn't do anything because I don't have any secondaries, so I don't even have to look at that. Um, anything else? No, it's too heavy. I cannot go faster. This is plus 20% fire extinguishing. And this is plus 10. But if I do this, I might be able to get maximum bulkheads. This... It's protecting flooding chance. I'm thinking flooding is currently more of a risk than fires and flash fires. So fire extinguishing, great, put it out fast, but overall it's usually the flooding that ends up killing me. 37 and a half knots. There we go. Now, the last ask is that this thing should have a name. 
that indicates uh, what was the phrase again? Give the shape a name that will give off the concept of denying communism, communistic expansion. Um, let's say this is the USS. Um, the USS containment. Mm. USS capitalism might be a bit too much on the nose. The USS freedom, why not? If it's American, it usually has something to do with freedom because they cannot go five minutes without telling you about it. Let's go. All right, short range duel against two destroyers and a light cruiser with two of my destroyers. My, uh, well, my super fletchers, I suppose you could call them. Don't torpedo anything unless otherwise directed. They're only 18 inch, so they're not going to do that much damage, but they will reload fairly quickly. And hopefully, if the enemy does not have a lot of armor protection, a lot of bulkheads, they will pretty quickly kill them. Oh, sure. The Russians have to bring more guns. Holy shit, they got a lot more guns. They got 14 4 inch guns. <laughs> And one single torpedo launcher hidden somewhere in the middle of the ship. Alright. What about your light cruiser? Because that's the one I'm more afraid of. Is that 6 inch guns? 8 6 inch guns and 32 inch guns. Yeah, that's going to be fun. Don't try to approach that too much or it will put you really, really, really soon. All right, we have the Monaghan and the USS Freedom. The enemy is approaching us. We're going to turn to port. We're going to set full speed. We're going to smoke up. Target the lead enemy destroyer and open fire. The enemy destroyer immediately launches a torpedo. So we're going to turn back to starboard. I wonder how, how much this thing is going to list in a turn. Yeah, see, that's a fairly hefty turn. And um, quite a few of my turrets are not free spinning. Which means that it's going to take a while before I might be able to fire another shot. This one is free spinning. This one, not so much. And the ones on the stern, absolutely not. What's my range? 14-2. Detectability is plus 8. If these guys have any sense, they will immediately detect the torps and start turning. So this is more going to be a longer range solution, if you will. Ah, oh, damn it, there's another torp. Alright, we're going to zigzag back to port. Oops. That light cruiser just uh, put me on fire. Just as I was saying that fires are usually not my biggest concern. The thing goes, oh yeah? Let's see about that, shall we? There's their torp. Now I'm trying to hit the light cruiser because it's an easier target to hit. Jesus. <laughs> see, this is why armor on the DD just does not matter. One and a half inches of armor, effective three, because you double it. No joy. I wonder if I can pen that light cruiser. Torpedoes away, starboard side, Monaghan. Identification 63, 69, and 58. So we're going to take a while. Now, ideally, you zigzag with these uh, little torpedo boats or DDs, but the problem with that is that I throw off my aim constantly. So the gunboat focus of this destroyer is, well, is hampered by its own maneuvers. Jeez, there's another torp. Did you stop doing that, maybe? How quickly do you reload that? I reload mine in 300 seconds, that's 5 minutes. Do you reload yours in a third? Or in, in half? Because that would mean that they can keep throwing these things out <laughs> every 2.5 minutes. Well, we're about to find out. Can we still see it? 
What you got? The Velox. 150 seconds. Yep, there it is. And they still carry a few more Torps. The light cruiser has not yet been fully identified. Turn back to starboard. Switch fire to the Velox. She's no longer inside of a smoke screen. That might be your opportunity to hit him. 40 knots. Maximum bulkheads. Really? Still two torpedoes remain. So if I can just uh, let them launch those torps, I can probably then close in, once my smokescreen is back up, and torpedo them. I just need the Velox to go at me again. But with a torpedo angle that's fairly narrow, it's not going to be easy for them to launch again. Identification of the light cruiser, Talbot. Yeah. Minimum bulkheads, okay. That's interesting. Because that means take a hit or two, even running straight at it, and I might be able to torpedo it. The challenge is, can I survive for long enough? Can I actually live long enough to torpedo this guy? The Monahan unfortunately has engine 2 damaged in the compartment where she is flooding. So there's a decent chance that she'll not be able to recover that. We're going to have the Freedom intercept the light cruiser. It's a risky venture, but we're going to have to do it. Otherwise, that thing is just going to keep breaking us up from a distance. They have a standard complement of ammo, but 6-inch shells mean that they have ammo for days. I'm not going to wait that out. What sort of sonar do you have? Sonar 3, oh no. Turning circle? 568. That's not good for a light cruiser. But it's good for me. What's your range? 8. Okay. What's our firing range? 11. It's just that with a 2% chance to hit, it's more likely that we'll hit the Talbot. Oh, engine damage on the Velox. Is that going to stick or not? The Freedom is charging in. Come on, buddy. You still have a long way to go. But I have a very good pen chance. Nice. It's because, like me, the Talbot really doesn't have that much armor. Holy shit! <laughs> Their yeah, there we go. Their chance to pen me is almost perfect. If I could just blow a few holes in her, flutter out a bit, then the Freedom can approach even faster. Monahan still has that engine damaged. I don't think we're going to get one back anytime soon. But we're going to need a shipyard in order to fix that part. Pen chance is going down. Are you angled? No, not that much. How much belt armor do you have? 2.3. Yeah, I can pen that. No problem. The problem is, however, that I might not be able to close the 6 kilometer distance before my smoke screen runs out. Monahan, I need you to cause a distraction so that the freedom can charge in. Velox hasn't torped again. Miranda still has her torps. 10,000 ammo for the two inch guns. How much do you carry? Even more, probably. Yeah, almost 15,000. Good lord. Rudder damaged. Okay. But they immediately fixed it. Let's send the port torpedo launchers against that target. If she continues on her course, I might... Might be able to get a hit. Hello? Thank you. I'm gonna save the other ones. They're probably going to notice these uh, when they get to... Four kilometers ish. Yeah, there she goes. She detected the torps. Can 
Come on. It's time to spread some freedom. And I don't mean have the freedom detonate all over the place. That's a different way of spreading freedom. Range 4, 6. She's heading away. Her speed is 36 and a half. I can do 35 after having been slightly damaged. My smoke screen's out. This is going to be a problem. The only thing that I have going for me right now is that she's moving away from me. Which means that the bow turret can't fire. But the rest of them can and are. So this light cruiser is causing all sorts of issues. And seeing as my torpedoes are not sneaky enough to go in there and kill them. We're going to have problems. Monahan status? You can barely keep up with the enemy. Because these things can do 40 knots. That's not good. 4.3 clicks. Keep zigzagging. They still have 1186 shells for the 6-inch. You still have a lot for the 4-inch. Uh-oh. Why am I struggling to pen that target? Because it's less than 5 kilometer range, so I should be able to pen 8.2 inches of armor. And this thing has 2.3 inches of belt. You're not that angled. We are closing on this light cruiser. We're just doing a little bit of damage at a time. Switch to high explosive. That flooding is going to make this ship even slower. Reducing my chances to intercept the Talbot even more. Port torpedo launcher, target Talbot. And when it's spooked, Talbot detected. Turning to starboard. Just not hitting. 1.7% chance to hit. Their chance is 3.2. They have a debuff of 37%. Technologies is plus 34. Mine is plus 44, so I have better tech effectively. Now, I think their turrets are not that fast. No, they're electrical turrets. So how do you explain that? There's a few fires raging on the Talbot, but nothing serious. Nothing that's going to put that ship down. Come on, Freddy, I need you to pump the water back out of the bow. It'd be nice if we could get a move on. Chance to hit suddenly going up. We're at 12% now. 3.1 clicks, 3 clicks. Please don't suddenly blow me up with those 6-inch guns of yours. Smoke. Come on. Once the light cruiser is dead, we're not completely out of trouble, but at least we have taken down their worst damage dealer. 2.8. Two, 2.6, 2.5. Structural integrity is dropping. At least my buoyancy is not. Switch to auto. If I could damage the rudder, that'd be great. If I could damage their engine, all the better. Damage the main tower. No, that's not part of what I have on the list. Range 2.2. All of those 2-inch guns, insofar as they're capable, are now going to be opening up against me. Rudder damaged. Rudder damaged on freedom as well. Rudder repaired on Talbot. <laughs> Damn, that was fast. Fire on the Talbot. Come on. This is not looking good. 
I'm getting severe damage now. It's probably all those two-inch guns which are just pecking away at the ship. Come on. Starboard launcher. Do we still have a starboard launcher? That remains to be seen. Yeah, we should. Maybe I just need to turn to port more. Come on! Nope. She's moving away again. This is definitely not gonna weigh, not gonna go well for the Americans. Talbot immediately detects the torpedoes and shifts course hard to port. What about Monahan? Oh, you're still dueling against the Vilox. Rudder damaged. To be fair, we have done some damage against the Talbot, just not as much as I would like. Velox is slowly but steadily getting damaged. What are you trying to hit? Well, you are trying to hit me, you just were turning your turrets towards me. There goes the freedom. Let's push through smoke. Fire and flooding! Excellent, but it's the wrong ship. I would really want fire and flooding on the light cruiser. More fire. She is still a bit of a torpedo hazard, but so am I. Oh. Jeez, we're really tearing each other apart here. Felox is turning to port. Serious flooding. Three damaged engines. She's probably not going to be able to pump the water out. No, she is. Aux? Aux 2. No, you're not. Well, to be fair, yes, you might. Come on, Monaghan. No, didn't get to torp me. This time. Velox is having a really terrible time here. Come on. There we go. We've sunk one. There's still another destroyer and a light cruiser, and I'm not going to win that. All right, time to redesign this ship and make it more American. How do you make it more American, you say? Well, allow me to demonstrate. We're going to go with this, the cheapest light or the cheapest tower that we can find. And that's going to go for the secondary as well. Uh, the secondary tower here, the rear tower five. And then we're going to put on all the four inch guns that we can. Whoops. Apologies, I didn't realize I still had Facebook open. Uh, a thin funnel is going to give me absolutely no engine efficiency. Oil, force boilers, no. There, 100% engine efficiency for the low price of 180 tons versus 315. Uh, all the armor. We're going to need at least one torpedo launcher, so we shall carry one torpedo launcher. Uh, a barbette. Need you to move a bit that way. So if I move this to here, I should be able to add a few more 4-inch guns on the stern. This is just the beginning, though. Uh, some bulkheads. A bit of an auxiliary engine. A bit of a better engine shaft or propeller shafts, uh, auto loaders, range coincidence, some sonar would be nice. Uh, gun aiming speed is nice, but I don't really need the maximum. It's just going to make the ship too heavy. Hydraulic turrets is fine. We're going to go with super heavy lidite shells. 
which is going to cause all sorts of high explosive risk for my own ship, but for theirs too. And now I still have quite a few tons or quite a few tons left. So I can put more guns. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight turrets can be brought to bear against the enemy. Which means if I can get a couple of good salvos off, I might be able to do a fair amount of damage. The weight displacement is going to be horrible. And there is really not that much that I can do to fix that, I'm afraid. Because the ship is too heavy towards the stern. I already have this thing <laughs> as poorly balanced as I can, <laughs> pretty much. Oh yeah, we're also going to put the biggest torpedo on it. Uh, which goes really fast. Hmm. You know what? I might actually be able to sort of balance this thing out. One seven, one three point five. Look at that. So very American. One two three four five six seven turrets. Twenty one guns can all be brought towards the enemy. Eventually, because they won't turn particularly quick. Advanced hydraulics probably the best I can field. Yeah. So, plan. Uh, race towards the enemy. Hit them with a lot of halidite high explosive, which means 75% <laughs> fire chance. Really high shell damage. And hopefully, with all these guns, I can sink the enemy light cruiser. If not... I can always try and throw a 1747 damage torpedo into their face. Alright, tell me what you got. That's a really compact Russian destroyer. Oh, they're not even Russian, they're British. That explains the Talbot name. Um, doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to kill off enemy destroyers. Quite a few 4-inch guns. They got 15. That's rookie numbers, sir. I'm going to need to do better than that. The light cruiser is carrying 12 6-inch guns and 24 2-inch. And torpedo launchers to boot. So we're going to have a fairly good time here. Uh, we're going to scoot over to starboard. We're going to try and mess up the lead destroyer. We're going to only fire high explosive. And there we go. <laughs> We've already <laughs> set a fire. And another one. See, you don't have to hit much. But the shells that do hit, hit really hard <laughs> if you're firing Lidite. It's also just a matter of time until we start popping our own turrets, like corks, because they are very fragile things. And especially with lidite and super heavy shells, this thing is just a flash fire waiting to happen. Now, as it stands, I'm not going to bring all the guns to bear, because I just want to get into range first. Uh, ideally, I want to get the guns over to starboard. Yeah, they are. So that I can do a sort of a broadside attack. Just rush towards the enemy. Give him the good news. We've got the Millbrook. Standard complement of bulkheads. 4-inch, triple, quadruple torpedo launchers. Fairly sneaky. Minus 73%. Light cruiser is almost fully identified. Light cruiser is not in smoke. Let's hit the light cruiser while we can. If we can. Yep, there we go. <laughs> my uh, my super Fletcher was not a good idea, but this thing might work better. Retribution. Yeah, right. I'll show you retribution. Comes in the form of lidite. Just a lot of it. 3.7% chance to hit. With a 46% chance to pen. I don't need to pen, though. I just need to set a lot of fires. My torps were really, really quick. Turning circle on you. Pretty damn good. 
331. That's better than their destroyers. That's impressive. We're going to split the boys up again. The Freedom's going to charge that way. And the Glennon's going to continue. I have no more smoke. Which is somewhat bad news. Unfortunately, I cannot give the guys waypoints, so they're going to zigzag. I'm going to have to do that manually. God, these turrets are slow. Oh, that's not good. Let's see if we can whack one of these destroyers. Yep. <laughs> I'm telling you, this is the future. Lidite and super heavy shells. Does it have to make sense? No. This is a game. We're just trying to have fun here. The Retribution. Are you paying attention, sir? You are not. You're paying attention to Glennon. You are not watching the right target. 145. One high explosive shell from a 4 inch gun is doing that to a DD. <laughs> Two hits so far knocked off 14% of their structural integrity. I'm not sure if to be impressed or intimidated by this firepower. Anyway, the guy that designed the scenario said he wanted a gunboat heavy build. Well, here we are. Look at that thing go! Fashion. Flooding in all places. Buoyancy is dropping very quickly. You might kill her. Yeah. Okay. We have a fire aboard the Retribution. Retribution is very likely to try and torpedo the Freedom. Which uh, we cannot dissuade her from doing. But these ships are fairly agile themselves. So they should be able to dodge the torp. Provided we see it coming in time. But these things are 49 knots. So they're very, very fast. Relatively easy to spot with a plus 20% chance to spot. Or with a plus 20% uh, detectability. I still have to get closer. Oh shit, that's not good. There's the torps. I'm not going to be anywhere near that position anymore. Retribution is down to 90% structural. Come on. I know you got a damaged rudder and a damaged engine, but that's no reason not to keep charging in. We don't need a rudder where we're going. All we need is the torpedo tube. Now, to their credit, so far, none of the destroyers that I'm commanding have exploded yet. Which I think is pretty impressive. As they happen to have some... <laughs> some serious debuffs when it comes to the ability to explode. Or, well, I suppose you could call it buffs to the ability to explode. Starboard torpedo launcher on target, please. Now would be a fantastic time to launch... Torpedo away. And the Brits torp me as well. Jesus. What? Hold on. My torpedo, fair enough, was... A, well, not that much larger. This is a 23-inch torp. Mine's a 24-inch. I blew up the destroyer with a torpedo because I did 4,627 damage. They hit me three times, 502, 857, 744. And I'm still here, believe it or not. How the hell? The, well... To its defense... The destroyer didn't blow up the moment that it got hit by the torps, unlike the light cruiser. 
Yeah, sure, just throw another torpedo in her face. I gotta get this thing for the thumbnail. Alright, buddy. Let's see if we can do it with guns only, against Millbrook. Come to starboard a bit, allowing the stern guns to open up. There we go, fire and flooding. We don't care anything about your smokescreen. Engines damaged, more flooding. I need to do this more often. Flooding. Toast. <laughs> it doesn't have to make sense. You just gotta throw a whole lot of 4-inch high-explosive super heavy shells powered by lidite at the enemy and watch what happens. So, I hope you guys had fun with that American-ish destroyer build. Let me know what your thoughts are down below in the comment section. If you want your scenario to get turned into a video, then please send it in through the link that you can find when you become a patron, that is, if you want to join the Naval Architects. I sometimes also do regular scenarios and you can also send your scenario in there through the link in the description. Thank you for watching. Hope you had fun. I'll see you soon for another video.